Good morning and welcome to all of you to this session of this course. So far, we have discussed the basic fluid mechanical principles of some fluid machines like Pelton turbine, Francis turbine, Kaplan turbine and centrifugal pump and reciprocating pump. The characteristic feature of all these machines was that the working fluid was water and we discussed the basic principle of their operations along with the description of different parts of the machines and its performance uh, criteria or performance characteristics. Now, there are several other types of fluid machines are available in practice or found in practice which use air, steam or gases. Um, gases means the mixture of air and the products of combustion which are generated by the burning of fuel as required and those machines the basic difference is that since use a fluid which are not liquid is compressible in nature in a sense that their bulk modulus of elasticity is relatively much lower compared to that of liquid. Therefore, what happens is that the density changes with pressure as well as with temperature as the fluid flows through the machines. And apart from that, there are other features of compressible flow found in those machines depending upon the regime of the flow. These machines are usually known as compressible flow machines and in a more acceptable and popular terminology is the turbo machines. Now, a detailed discussion on turbo machines is beyond the scope of this course. So, we will discuss only few of such machines like centrifugal compressors, axial flow compressors, fans and blowers. So, first we start with centrifugal compressors. Now, centrifugal compressor is just you think is similar to that of a centrifugal pump which we already discussed which use working fluid water. Now, as I already told in the beginning of this course that a pump or compressor is a machine where energy is being supplied from outside and that energy is again imparted to the fluid by the machines by virtue of which fluid gains its internal energy and that internal energy is gained by the fluid in terms of a rise in static pressure which we can loosely call as pressure energy and in terms of the kinetic energy that means high flow velocity. In pumps and compressors the fluid internal energy is usually obtained in terms of higher static pressure with low flow velocity. While the machine using the liquid or water is termed as pump, the machines using air or vapor are termed as compressor. Now, so today we will discuss the centrifugal compressor. I will come to that discussion why it is called centrifugal compressor. Now, the centrifugal compressor is usually just before starting uh, its description, I tell you, it has got application today in small turbojet, turbofan, turboprop engines and small gas turbine plants. And in all those engines along with the axial compressors which have been developed later on, the centrifugal compressors are also used. These are the applications. Now, I come to the basic of centrifugal compressors. Now, you see a centrifugal compressor as I have told that it uses air as the working fluid and energy is being given to the machine to raise the static pressure. Now, centrifugal compressors consist mainly of three parts. One is the casing, stationary casing. All machine basically have stationary casing. Number two is the important part is the impeller which is known as impeller which is the rotating 
part of the machine which is known as rotor that is rotating part of the machine rotating part of the machine part of the machine where the energy is being imparted to the fluid and number 3 is the diffuser 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 is the static one sometimes it can be told as stator where what happens when the energy is being imparted in the rotating part or rotor known as impeller the energy is gained both in terms of pressure stat rise in static pressure and velocity mostly in the terms of velocity along with the rise in static pressure diffuser is that part where the fluid is being decelerated to gain in static pressure by decreasing the velocity because main objective of the centrifugal compressor is to have air at high static pressure. So, therefore, the velocity which is gained by the fluid in terms of the kinetic energy in the impeller is being converted to static pressure by the deceleration which sometimes is called as the diffusion process in fluid mechanics to obtain a rise in static pressure. So, these three are the important parts and consists and comprises a centrifugal compression. Okay. Let us now see one by one that how a the parts look like. Now, here we see that this is the impeller. You see this is the impeller looks like a looks like this. It is just like a rotating disc. You see this is the impeller. This is the impeller this is the impeller. Now, this is the inlet of the impeller. This is known as impeller I. The air is being sucked when the impeller rotates. The air is being sucked like this through the impeller I. This is the impeller I. This is the impeller I. This, this is the impeller I. Now, there are veins like this. These are the veins which are curved initially and then at the outlet it is more or less radial, flat and radial. And the fluid which is sucked change this direction and flows like this, try to understand, flows like this. This is a radially outward flow machines. This is a radially outward flow machines. Now, what happens? I tell you, the air is sucked actually by the rotating action of the impeller at the impeller eye. Here it is impeller eye. See, impeller eye. And then the air is ultimately directed radially outwards through the rotating impeller. Okay. Now, you see here that since when the air goes through this passage radially outward and at the same time impeller is being rotated. For example, this is this is the diffuser vein. I am sorry. This is the impeller. This part is rotated. This part is rotated like this. Then what happens as the fluid goes out in the radial location, it pressure increases along the radial direction. So, this can be explained this way that because of this rotation a tangential velocity is imparted on the fluid and therefore, fluid obtains a centripetal acceleration which is manifested in terms of a rise in pressure radially outward or you can see other way that if you consider a fluid element in this radial gap if you see here if you consider a fluid element like this this is the radial direction r. If the fluid particle has a tangential velocity, then there has to be a inward radial force due to the pressure on both the sides. Let this side is 2 p 2 and this side is 1 p 1. So, net force should be acting on the fluid in this radially inward direction to balance the centrifugal force in the outward direction so that fluid element can rotate in the tangential path. This is the basic requirement for any tangential flow in a fluid. That means, if the fluid has a tangential component of velocity, then the pressure rises radially outward. This is because this pressure gradient gives rise to a inward radial force to balance the centrifugal force. So, therefore, the pressure rise obtained in the outward radial direction because of the centrifugal action 
due to the rotation of the fluid element and that is the reason for which this type of machine is called as centrifugal machines and here it is centrifugal compressor clear so therefore since it is radially outward so pressure is automatically gained by the action of the tangential velocity that is the centrifugal or centripetal acceleration so pressure rise takes place and at the same time by the action of the blade the blade imparts the this velocity to the fluid because since the fluid is flowing through the passage fluid is acquires the velocity because of the rotating blade which is basically the impulse action that i already explained while discussing the hydraulic machines so this is basically the impeller part the fluid is the air here is sucked axially by the impeller eye and then goes radially outward through these impeller blade passages then what happens when it comes out of the impeller tip the air has got a high velocity at the same time it has got a high pressure but we want more pressure rather less velocity so what happens therefore it goes through some stationary passages that is being made by these vanes these are stationary vanes and this is known as the diffuser this passage is known as the diffuser so you see it is written this is the diffuser where what happens when the flow takes place there is no energy exchange only fluid flows in a direction where the area increases so what happens simply the pressure is increased because area increasing means by continuity the fluid velocity decreases and in consequence to that the pressure increases this is the process by which the fluid is decelerated and its pressure is increased so that at the final outlet that the final outward periphery of the diffuser here we have air at a very high static pressure but at a relatively much lower velocity so this is impeller blades as you see and now here another thing i will explain afterwards before entering to the fixed vent passages known as diffusers there are some vanless space which is known as vanless diffuser vanless space i will come to that afterwards and why so many number of passages are made that also i will tell afterwards in pump you have seen that the similar thing was, was similar thing happened but similar thing was made by a volute casing where the fluid is decelerated to get high pressure of the water at the expense of its high velocity at the outlet of the runner there the impeller was called they are also impeller sorry not runner impeller at the outlet of the impeller but there we had a single volute casing without number of passages created by this type of vent but here the vents are there to create a number of passages to divide the flow into small passages i will come to that afterwards this you can have a look of this diffuser and the impeller if you take a view from this side you will get a view like this so this is the impeller blade this is the diffuser this is the depth of the diffuser now sometimes there are the impellers are both sided that means the air is sucked from this side of the impeller from this side a double action so this is also shown like that so this is a double sided impeller that means the air flows from both the sides double sided impeller these are the schematic views of the impeller okay now after this we come to this figure now we have to find out the equations for energy transfer in this machine that means in air okay so now let us see that this figure is shown in a rather this figure if we have a view from this direction and if you see that front view it looks like this this is the blade which is radial and relatively flat at the outer periphery and curved here so here this is the impeller tip so this the air comes like this axially and it goes then is bent like this and it goes radially outward through the blade passages like this so therefore if one sees so sees from the top the blade looks like this this is the blade this is curved this is the curvature of the blade at the inlet and then goes radially straight at the outlet now 
the inlet velocity is made this way that under the design condition the fluid as I told earlier in all hydraulic machines we always make the flow in such a way that the fluid whether it is liquid or it is gas or it is air always should flow in a way that it should glide the blade surface. That means while it enters the blade it should glide the blade surface which means that the velocity vector relative to the blade because blade is a moving element. So, if fluid has to glide over that moving blade means that the fluid velocity relative to the blade should be such that the angle should match that means the angle of the velocity vector the relative velocity vector must match the inlet angle of the blade or vein and the blade or vein is designed accordingly the inlet angle is designed such that the relative velocity must that angle of the relative velocity must match the inlet angle of the blade. So, here also it is true that is this that was it was discussed earlier. So, for smooth entrance of the air here. So, the relative velocity angle should be same as that here we specify the angle with respect to the tangential direction. We are looking from the top this is rotating in this direction the impeller. So, therefore, this is the tangential direction this is this direction is the tangential direction. Now, what happens the impeller is designed in such a way that it draws air I told earlier axially. So, it draws axially. So, at the inlet the velocity the absolute velocity of the air is in axial direction. So, therefore, this is the velocity triangle which is in this plane. I tell you if you see here which take place that means this is in axial direction that means we see from the top we will see this direction which is the axial direction. That means here if you see this direction is the absolute velocity direction which is the axial direction. Sometime this is referred as the flow velocity. So, flow velocity this is the axial direction ok this is the absolute velocity. Now, if you have to find out the relative velocity so you have to vectorially subtract the velocity of the impeller at the inlet that means the relative velocity v r 1 vector is v 1 minus u 1. So, therefore, this is the u 1. So, this if you draw this diagram. So, this will be this is v r 1, this is u 1, this is u 1 and therefore, this is v 1. So, this is the relative velocity v 1 minus u 1 and this angle is the angle made by the relative velocity with the tangential direction while the absolute velocity makes a 90 degree angle because this is axial and axial direction is perpendicular to the tangential direction. So, therefore, this is the axial and this is the flow velocity at the inlet that means, if this velocity is v 1 this is multiplied by this area frontal area of the impeller i will give you the mass flow rate coming to the the volume flow rate times the density is the mass flow rate going to the compressor. So, therefore, you have to understand very clearly the inlet velocity triangle already you know the velocity triangle concept earlier also we did it uh, in hydraulic uh, turbines and compressor hydraulic turbines and pumps. Another assumption for this as you know already that we always consider a uniform because the variation in this direction is neglected the circumferential direction. So, therefore, we always consider a uniform velocity distribution along the circumference that means it is a azimuthal symmetric flow. So, that any representative point this velocity at any azimuthal location is the representative the velocity of the entire periphery. So, with that we can show the inlet velocity triangle at the for this impeller. Now, what happened what at the outlet? Now, at the outlet what happened the since the blade is made radial what do you want? Why the blade is radial? That means, we want that the relative velocity that means, the velocity radial means if it has to go smooth go out smoothly over this blade the radial velocity or uh, sorry the relative velocity of the air with respect to the blade should be in the radial direction. So, this is the, the therefore, here if you write V r 2 is V 2 
minus u2. What is u2? u2 is the velocity of the impeller at the outlet. Now, if we want that the relative velocity v r 2 should be such that it must, must match the angle of the blade at the outlet and since the blade is made radial, this is deliberately made radial. So, that for that smooth outlet, the radial velocity should also be radial. Uh, sorry, the uh, uh, relative velocity should also be radial. So, this is the relative velocity v r 2. You see this, uh, this diagram. This diagram is better, I think. You see this. Diagram. This is the relative velocity v r 2. This is the v 2 and this is the u 2. Because we can write this one here that v r 2 is v 2 minus u 2. So, you see. So, with this we can draw this triangle diagram. So, this is the. So, therefore, what happens? This is the relative velocity. So, absolute velocity is this. Since the relative velocity is in the purely radial direction. So, absolute velocity does not have sorry the absolute velocity does have a tangential component. The absolute velocity does have a tangential component which is equal to u 2. Here you see the absolute velocity does not have a tangential component because absolute velocity is axial perpendicular to the tangential direction. Here the absolute velocity has a tangential component v w 2 this nomenclature you know earlier that v w 2 is the tangential component or whirling component that is why the w is given at the outlet. Similarly, v w 1 here you can write v w 1 is 0 that is the tangential component of the velo uh, velocity of the fluid that is air at inlet is 0, whirling component of velocity is 0, but here it is u 2. So, with this blade diagram now what we can write? We can write the energy transferred to the fluid. Now, energy which is transferred to the fluid energy transferred to the fluid. Now, energy transferred to the fluid takes place by the action of this rotating vane that already we derived that energy transferred to the fluid per unit mass is given by V this expression with the nomenclature I am telling where V w 2 is the tangential component of the fluid velocity at the outlet of the impeller, u 2 is the impeller linear velocity tangential velocity at the outlet, V w 1 is the tangential component of velocity of the fluid at the inlet which we call is that whirling component of velocity at inlet and u 1 is the velocity of the impeller at the inlet because of its rotation. So, this expression was derived earlier from the use by making use of the theorem of angular momentum or conservation of angular momentum. Theorem of angular momentum that is for a control volume we find out the net efflux of the angular momentum which equals to the torque imparted on the control volume. So, based on this angular momentum or the momentum momentum theorem we derive that the energy which is transferred in this case this expression equals to the energy given by the machine to the fluid v w 2 u 2 minus v w 1. It is a just reco uh, uh, recollection of the earlier things which we already discussed. Now, in this case particularly in this case v w 1 you see that in this case v w 1 is 0 and v w 2 at the outlet since the relative velocity is radial. So, v w 2 that is the tangential component of the absolute velocity equals to u 2. So, in this case v w 2 equals to u 2 and v w 1 equals to 0. So, therefore, energy given per unit mass of the air can be written as u 2 square simply u 2 square. So, therefore, u 2 square is the nothing but the energy given per unit uh, given by the machine to air per unit mass. Thank you.